Rod Mountain. I'm an ENT surgeon uh, working for the NHS. I'm based up at Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee and I've been there for probably the last 20 years. Been in the UK for about 30 years now and I almost feel uh, Dundonian. I'm part of the, part of the team. No, a fantastic question because it's really changed my way of thinking completely. It's uh, just a whole new way of approaching things and I think you're quite right, it was us meeting up, meeting a, a, a student, yeah. Chris McCann, yeah. who I think if you look at his strengths in life, he's, he's got a strong design-led focus mm -hmm. into the products that he's developing now, even as a medical student, you know, yeah. hard to believe. So a journey that started there, but then fed into links with Duncan of Jordanson Co College of Art and Design. Yeah, quite significantly. If you'd asked me two years ago, what does design mean in a healthcare setting? I'd, I'd probably look at you in a, with a slightly glazed look and think of architecture, maybe buildings. And I think if you even went and Googled mm. uh, healthcare design, that's what you end up with. It, it's, it's structures, buildings and things. So um, truly learning what design means, you know, products, services, mm. digital interactive, interiors, exterior, you know, f the physical spaces that we work in, um, suddenly, oh wow, well, this, this, is, this is powerful stuff. I suppose a catalyst that woke me up from my old way of thinking was meeting Mike Press, who's he's really the guru of uh, service design in Dundee. So he's, you know, a fantastic academic approach to it, but uh, a person that actually gets out into society and truly take service design into organizations that, that need help and, and support. And I suppose quite an embarrassing mom moment for me, this realization of what design is, is sitting having a cup of coffee with Mike and uh, looking at the pressures in the NHS and him saying to me, well, Rod, how do you address all the challenges you have in the NHS? So I went into medical mode, management mode, and um, said, well, look, we get together as a bunch of senior doctors, a few managers, maybe some senior nurses, we have a meeting. We then, uh, uh, you know, we try and we shuffle things around basically. Uh, there's, there's very rarely some radical change that occurs in that. And then there was a sort of pause and he looked at me and he said, well, Rod, who are your users? So, oh, oh dear. <laughs> you know, we've completely uh, forgotten about engaging with our users, our patients, our carers, our staff that work in our, our teams in the hospital. So that's, that, that one engagement sort of changed my mindset completely. And then I've gone off and tried to learn the language of what design's all about. And I think that's where you and I are. You've learned it in yeah. the business world. I've learned it in the healthcare and social care world. So it's all been Mike that I think triggered that. What, what I've learned is I went along to a lot of uh, Mike and Hazel's service design events yeah. and actually saw how they structured a service design engagement with a challenge mm. uh, and learned the tools that they um, have that they use in service design, uh, you know, empathy mapping, um, a whole lot of other tools, rip and mix, yep. things that you can actually take and, and use in a practical sense. Um, and I've taken those tools out and experimented, I suppose. With, uh, with a classic example would be education. And you'd say, where does design come into education? So we have a new type of cancer that we're all dealing with, that we're all learning about as doctors. It's, it's a throat cancer. Um, and traditionally, we would hold an education get together where we'd all get somebody to present the latest academic updates mm -hmm. on that subject. And we all get together on a Friday afternoon. And it's a bit dry. To be quite honest, you maybe learn a little bit and that's way of going about things. But I thought, why don't we set up an event where we would get all our staff that help patients with that condition. In other words, our nursing team, our administrators, some of the um, cancer chemotherapist surgeons, but very importantly, bring some patients to that education event. So we had about 30 people in a room, five people who had had that cancer and been on that journey with that cancer in, in the room for half a day. And it was just fantastic. We listened to their stories um, and the touch points along the way, all these design sort of approaches. And we learned more 
as a team, the patients learned a lot about the disease. We learned so much from them, and we learned things that we'd never have expected, a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, it's a very good question to a doctor. We, sh <laughs> we should be the people in society that know everything about empathy. And I can assure you we don't. It's not even taught to our medical students and our, and our nursing students. And it's fundamental to not only the way we work in the health service, but to everybody in their personal lives, in their business lives, just in any engagement with human beings. And um, that whole thing of genuinely getting into the shoes of another person, sort of seeing things through their eyes, hearing what they, they're saying and, and, and what they're hearing in your engagement. And there's a term that I, I think is something you can really practically use, and that's deep listening, really listening. I'm sure you have mm -hmm. engagements with people and you just have a very superficial communication between human beings, but truly listening to somebody um, and feeling their emotion, the positive and negative aspects of um, their engagement with your service in the healthcare setting as you coming to see me with a lump in your neck, mm -hmm. coming to me, you anxious, and it's reading you your body language, all that sort of thing, really trying to help you on that journey. Very, very powerful. And it builds trust. Big, big thing. If you're an empathic person, I think people um, trust you and invaluable, I think, in business, health service, whatever we do. There are a lot of guys my age that are thinking about retiring. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and I suppose just because of what design, empathy, all these sort of things I think can genuinely do to our organizations to make them function better. Um, I think design as a sort of term sits halfway between, it's the interface between science and art. It, it's the glue that brings them together. And everything I've learned through coming through to DJ CAD, to the art college, has, has taught me that get together with a group of art and design students, mix them up with a bunch of more science-based students like our medical students. You know, we've just done that today. Mm. Got, what, 35, 36 of them all together, looked at a challenge of redesigning our hospital from an empathic point of view, people with disabilities, hearing, vision, all these sort of things. So powerful in what those students came out with through an empathic approach, through a design-led way of thinking. And I really want to get all our students, our medical students, our nursing students, to learn the language, to learn the tools. It's going to take a while and a bit of convincing, but uh, that, that's what I want to try and do.